looking for some wreath ideas? Check these out. I'm Brandy, and this is Making It My Own DIYs. For the first project, we're going to make an adorable bunny wreath. We're going to need some pipe cleaners, a sign of your choice from Dollar Tree. I love this one, very rustic. A wire wreath form, and this is the bigger form. And I've got just a bunch of carrots that I got at the thrift store, but you can use the carrots that you buy at Dollar Tree. It's totally fine, whatever you have. I have some burlap ribbon. And then I have another variety of burlap and linen ribbons, some mesh ribbon, and then just to give you an idea of other types of patterns that you could use with your wreath. We're going to start off by laying out the frame here and I'm showing you with this green. We're going to add, you'll see me doing this on the crossbars here. We're gonna do a green one on the inside loop and a green one on the outside loop of each one of these. Now I started off with a different pattern when I used the orange on another wreath. So just avoid that. Just don't pay attention to that one. When you see it, we're gonna skip back over to it. You just do your wreath just like this because this is the pattern we end up using. So over the crossbar, on the bottom ring, and in the top ring. Right in those centers. Just give it a few twists and use a full length pipe cleaner here. Then you want to go all the way around back to the top. You can kind of do the math on that and see how many you'll need. All right, so we're going to grab that roll, kind of pleat it, pinch it, make sure that the edges are kind of on the outside. It's not wired, so it's just uh, kind of got a seam on it there, makes it nice and neat. And like I said, we're going to just pretend like this is on the outside. Okay, we're pretending like this is on the outside. And then we're going to go down 10 inches, make a little poof. And then we will use the tie and put that down. So what you're going to be doing is, since you'll have two on each rung, remember how we did that, you're going to go from inside, outside, inside, outside. So if we started off on the inside, the next would be the outside. The next poof would go to the inside. The next poof would go to the outside. You see what I'm saying here? That's how we're going to be doing this all the way around. So we were on the outside. And now we're back on the inside. We're going to make a 10 inch poof and we're going to go back to the outside. And when we put the next layer on, we'll do just the opposite. So this ribbon will be kind of crisscrossed over on itself. If you don't have this, it's fine to use whatever type of um, wide ribbon that you have. Maybe you could use that. Never tried to just use a big wide ribbon that didn't have a lot of body like the burlap does. Um, but you could try it, certainly. And you can use any type of uh, deco mesh if you wanted to use deco mesh instead. I'm not the biggest fan of deco mesh. I don't mind using it occasionally, but I prefer the burlap just because I prefer, you know, a rustic or a country type cottagey look. So now we went all the way back to where we started and we're going to go to the inside. Just going to go back and forth now. So we're on the inside. We're going to give that a few tight twists and then we'll measure 10 inches and we'll go to the outside. And this is the process that you want to use all the way around until you get back to the beginning. Y'all, it's supposed to storm today. Today is actually the 16th, and we're supposed to have some terrible weather in about 15 minutes. So hopefully I can get this video finished for you guys and run down to get some good and fast high-speed internet at the library and then be back home in the safety of my house where I have a storm basement should I need it. Okay, so we went all the way back around and trimmed it off. Now we're going to make some ribbon stacks because you know this is just my preferred method for these wreaths. And since I've done them several times, I figured this would be an easy wreath for you to follow. You've seen me do these before. 
I'm going to use a stripe on the bottom, a solid one, and then that little mesh. And I actually use the white mesh rather than the green. I just like the combination of this a little bit better. Trying to keep it, you know, keep it as neutral as possible, but still giving it that pop of spring and Easter color. So now for this wreath, when we put down these ribbon stacks, you're going to put it right in the center and take the two ends on the outside and the two ends on the inside. Just bring all those pipe cleaners to the middle and you're going to cross two over two. Very easy and you'll see me do it again. I'm going to put it right in the middle. Then I'm going to take the two from the left and the two from the right and twist them together. Just going to pull them down tight so they kind of squish down in there. And there you go. Easy enough, right? This is easy. Y'all can do this. Y'all can definitely do this. And wouldn't this be cute for if you did it for like St. Patrick's Day and you did, instead of using orange, you just used uh, maybe some gold and some green and some white. Heck, I think the in the Irish flag, green, white, and orange. So actually maybe this wreath base could be used if you wanted to put your St. Patrick's Day goodies on it. Let me know in the comments if you know if that is the colors in that um, the Irish flag, because I think it is. It may be yellow and green. It may be yellow and green, I'm not sure. But I'm just gonna speed this up and show you. Now, I cut, think I cut these at 10 inches and then I dovetailed all of them. And the only ribbon that has wire in it on these stacks is that green ribbon. And I got that 90% off after fall at Hobby Lobby. So, yeah, I was very happy to find that ribbon. Okay, I'm going to continue all the way around. I hope y'all are staying safe, uh, and I hope that you up north, that you guys are not freezing in the cold weather. I've, I've heard so much about snow and, and people being cold, and I know that some places are getting cold weather they're not even used to having, so that's just... Oh, I just, I don't, I can't imagine. I'm glad I have a fireplace, but I don't have to use it very many days where we live. You know, down in South Alabama, you don't really need fireplace necessarily. But I think they're beautiful and I love to hear the sounds and watch the fire. I'm an Aries, so I love the fire. All right, so now when you get all the way back around, go ahead and fluff that all out. You can pull your burlap underneath and then fluff your little ribbons and you can kind of manipulate them and get them around there. See how pretty that cream and burlap colored linen ribbon is underneath? I love that. I've done it on a, used it on a few projects and it really just is so neutral it goes with anything. Very farmhouse pop to it. So this is what the base is going to look like. And we're gonna take a bunch of carrots. I'm gonna tie those together. I'm just taking three and I've kind of staggered them in the layers so that they look you know they look nice and they're they're going to have the lowest profile as possible instead of all sticking up when I glue them down so the one underneath is a little bit lower down and the two on top um, are kind of layered on top a little bit we'll tie this little bunch of carrots like we've been to the farmer's market go back in there and cut off these pipe cleaners anything you have left cut it off don't cut all the way into where you twisted it or it will fall apart. So just leave a little nub there and just push it down. And if you would like to, you can take those pipe cleaners and push them down into the raised base, base <laughs> if you would like to. Whichever way is easiest for you is fine. And some people don't have clippers, and so that's fine too. By the way, a lot of people ask about these wire cutters. I don't have the exact same ones in my Amazon store, but I have something similar if you want to check them out. So we took the hanger and the tags off the sign. We got it flipped over. And now we're gonna put in the pipe cleaner so that they will kind of reach through the wreath so that we can secure it down. So I'm gonna use some glue here and then a little scrap of paper over the top. Give that a chance to cool down and dry. I'm just gonna use a clamp to hold it for me so I don't have to sit there with my hand on it. Anything we can do to save time is wonderful clamps help me so much okay now we got the other one clamp it once it's all cooled off pop your clamps off bend your wires like this and then when you flip them over you can just kind of feed those little pipe cleaners right through the re-space base and then 
right onto the wire because you don't want to attach it where it's just stuck down to a piece of ribbon. You really want it on that wire frame so that it doesn't go anywhere. It won't shift and won't go anywhere. And since we didn't hot glue this sign down, you can move the sign off, use it for something else, and you can just use the wreath, wreath base. Why am I having a trouble saying that today? Wreath base. Okay. You can use that by itself without the sign. And I love that idea. You can just swap things around. I love it. And there's my beautiful little cotton patch little sign in the middle of there, and I think it looks perfect. So now we gotta add our carrots up there, right? And I love that there are carrots in the picture, and now we're putting carrots on the outside of this wreath. And I think it looks darling and cottagey. I just love this. I just hope y'all will try to do something like this. I know these carrots are very nice carrots. I got them at, you know, at the thrift store. Unfortunately, I'm not sure where you can get the exact same thing, but use what you got. And we don't have to do a big bow or anything. This is perfect just as it is. But by all means, put a bow on there if that's what you like. The next project is the Lucky Wreath. I have some, I think this is a 10 or 12 inch deco mesh. I'm going to have two different colors. We're going to need Mod Podge, some pipe cleaners, this wreath form from Dollar Tree. And you can see the information here and on the back. You need a shamrock form, whatever type you have. And then some coordinating paper for St. Patrick's Day. I'm going to cut my hanger off. This originally came from Target. I've had it for years and years and years. I bought three of them originally. I, I will link my St. Patrick's Day video from uh, last year so that you can watch that and see how I did another one of these, how I fixed it up. Trace it out on your paper on the back side. Trim it out so that it fits pretty close. You don't have to have it exact. Then grab that Mod Podge and put that all over. I'm using the back because I don't want the little um, indentions from the front on there. I'm afraid I'll tear it when I try to smooth it out, so I'm just gonna use my back side. It's nice and smooth. Place it down and use my fingers to kind of smooth it out for first before I use my little squeegee. And this is a Mod Podge squeegee. And just push it out. I got the, the Mod Podge and the little squeegee from um, plaid online they have they make these products and they are wonderful I've gotten paints and all kinds of things from them take those pipe cleaners or chenille stems however proper you want to say that and then start putting these down on your wreath I am going to go to the middle section of each of those little crossbars there and wrap that around So there will be six of those going around on those middle sections. And then we are going to add some to the outside. I guess we're going to be making little poofs and we want them to be close together so they really fill out this wreath. I don't want any gaps where we can see the frame all the way through it. So there's our first row. Then let's go to the outside center and twist one in each section there. This is going to hold everything in place nicely. So once it's complete, you are going to have 12 of these sections. This is going to be our top and I'm going to start it in the center. Take that first bundle of mesh and we're going to squeeze it up in the end Kind of get your outsides flipped under because we want these to be bubbles. We don't want them flipped out. And then put about an inch of it down there, maybe a little more. And twist it tightly into place because we're going to be pulling on this as we are putting it down on the reform. And I don't want anything to come out. So I've gotten kind of used to doing 10 inch poofs. And that's what we're going to do here. Because 
I know that you have seen me do this before and I know that you can do this. Bundle it up 10 inches, go to the very next one and that's on the outside. So you're gonna wrap that outside one nice and tight. Probably only takes a, you know, a couple of twists to lock it into place. You don't have to go nuts here twisting all over the place. And then continue along, make another little loop. Gonna see how we do it. You can use a ruler to measure, or if you have one of those, if you have a cutting mat with the lines on it, you can use your cutting mat. I'm so used to doing it with the ruler that I just always do it this way. But I know some people say that it's easier if you use the lines and measurements from a cutting mat. Or one of those sewing mats, I guess, that's a cutting mat. Once you get all the way back down with that original roll we started with, we're going to go over the spot where we first put it down and just go right on top of that and give it a few twists. Then grab your scissors. Don't cut it too close. I've got about two inches here and then I'm going to cut it and then you can leave it right there. No problem. You're not going to see it when you get it all fluffed out. And you can see these make bubbles. You gotta be sure when you're making your little bubbles that you keep those edges curled under so they make a nice poof. We're gonna take the next roll, bunch it up. This is sort of, maybe it's chartreuse. It's a little bit duller than that though. Not quite as bright, but it's another shade of green, kind of a goldish green, I guess, that I want to add onto here. Now I'm using scraps. I got these rolls from the thrift store, so I have no idea how much is on the roll when I get started. I will tell you that the amount on this is not gonna make it all the way around the reef, but you know how we do it on this channel. We're gonna make it work, right? We're gonna make it work, we're gonna make it our own, and I'm gonna show you what to do if you run out. This has happened to me before. It happened on a, I think it was a 4th of July wreath. Yes, I think it was and we made it work. It turned out beautiful. So we're gonna continue with the same idea in mind that we can fix it. We can fix it, we're not gonna get frustrated and stop. We're just gonna change up our plan, right? If it's not working, change it up. That's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna go around right on top of the exact same place. We're gonna be outside, inside, outside, inside. Now, I didn't start this one on top of where the other one started and stopped because it was bulky enough. I just moved to a different section. You see how we ran out here? And there's about a quarter of the wreath that does not have that lighter green on it. What you see me doing is pulling the bubbles in and out. I've got uh, green to the inside, then the yellow to the inside, then the green, then the yellow, then the green, then the yellow, even though it's actually two shades of green. You get what I'm saying and pull those in and out, in and out, so that you can see that. Isn't that cute? So far, not bad. I know a lot of people don't like deco mesh. I don't blame you. It took me a while to get used to it. I still like to mix my media up when I do it, though. I still like to put other fabrics and stuff in it. So for the stacks of this one, super, super, super easy, we're going to make 24 12-inch green burlap strips and dovetail them and we're going to make 12 of these gold pieces and dovetail those. Just make an X, put the gold in the middle, bunch it up in the center, and then you are just gonna go right down to any starting place you want on your wreath, and we're gonna go all the way around with each and every one of those sections. And see, no wire in that gold, it's just, uh, but it will, stand out. It will do its own thing there and it, I think it looks good. It doesn't make a very big impact until you get them all in there and then you can really see the difference because the colors are so similar. Here's our second little stack and it's the same thing. Some are going to be on the outside, some will be in the inside, but every single one of those little bunches where the bubbles are, in other words, every place you have pipe cleaners is going to get a bundle of ribbons. That's a lot of words to say a little thing, isn't it? Go through there and get your clippers and take off those green pipe cleaners because we don't need those anymore for this. And this is how it looks even without having, you know, anything else onto it. Nothing else added to it. This is how it looks. So here's that section that doesn't have the extra on it. We're gonna put the clover there. 
first, we've got to sand it down a little bit. If you've got a very nice pair of detail scissors, you can cut it off, surely, if you'd like to do that. But I love to use this nail file. Uh, I just got it from Dollar Tree, not a big deal, they're cheap. And it's so easy to control. This is a diamond brand. You can just go through here and just sand off the edges all the way around till it is nice and smooth like this. You can paint your edges green if you want to, if you've got wood or something that you're using. Um, you could also use a shamrock, a little MDF sign if you wanted. We're gonna attach it with pipe cleaners and staples. So I've got it here and here. We're going to settle it down right over that section and it fits perfectly over where that gold is missing, or I said gold, I didn't mean gold, that green, lighter color green is. So there's a, that gap, and the clover fits right over the top of it. You're not even going to notice it at the end of the video, except that I told you so. I'm sure you'll notice it then. But I don't think anybody else looking at your front door would say, hey, you missed a spot. And if they do, you tell them, go right on back where they came from, right? <laughs> Okay, so now you can fluff your ribbons and fluff it out. We're going to take that Lucky. Remember we took it off that pot in the beginning? We're going to take that Lucky and put it on the shamrock. So I just have a little bit of school glue here. This has a kind of a finer tip. Recently found a bag of very fine tip glue uh, products at the thrift store and I was so excited. I, look, I don't know, glue, right? I get excited about glue, but I get excited about all craft stuff. I just do, there's so much joy for me in crafting, so, and especially when I can find something that's inexpensive, then I'm really excited about that. Cause I'm kind of a thrifty person. I'm kind of a, you know, I guess you could say cheapskate, <laughs> but I am. So I like to save money any way that I can because the money I save goes back to my family, right? Yep. So I'm going to take a white pen. You could use black, you could use gold, use what you have. And I'm just going to do dots and dashes all the way around the edge of the shamrock. And I'm going to do the same thing around the lucky word there. Go all the way around it, but you don't have to watch the whole thing. I'm going to show you just a little, and then I'll show you what it looks like. Y'all can add gold coins to this, anything you want to add to your wreath if you really want to give it a little extra something. You could use those shamrocks that we had that we pulled off the pot. You could put those right back in there, but I think they might get lost. They're kind of small. Okay, the next project is going to be a spring wreath. This is a wreath that I have used before in other projects. This is a pick from Dollar Tree. Love it. These are some thrifted flowers and Dollar Tree flowers. And the greenery I have there is like some form of eucalyptus, but it has been around forever. I'm going to use it today. I have some burlapfabric.com ribbon and then some that I thrifted, two different ones I thrifted, and they just coordinate with the colors in the sign. So to get these off without breaking it, you need to kind of support the back, twist it back and forth, that little wire that's in there, twist it back and forth carefully. You don't want to bend your, bend your tractor and then it just will kind of unscrew or like pull out. Now I'm going to clip off the little metal piece that was sticking down there when I pulled it off, make it nice and smooth. And I'll cut these into more manageable pieces. Put all my greenery down, except these picks, and I will be trimming those as we go. You can use a round, um, a round wreath form for this. You don't have to use this one, but I wanted to use it again, so here we go. I'm gonna start pressing these in, and the reason I laid my tractor there is because I wanna make sure that I have enough space for the tractor where it's not covered in greenery. So that's why I started the first one out this way. This happens to be wrapped in a um, it's wrapped in some jute, so that helps me to kind of feed the greenery down into it. And then I'm going to work sort of backwards from there. 
and I'm going to continue putting all the pieces in in the same direction. I'm, just, I'm going to trim the little stems down wherever they need to be trimmed so that they're not hanging out the bottom of our frame. I want to sort of keep the shape of the frame and because it's on wire I can bend things and give it more of a mm, just a better look I think. A smoother well put together look. So see how we follow the bend with the curve of the greenery. I like that. And y'all don't be afraid to play with the greenery and and especially when it has wire in it kind of fluff it out pull your pieces around give it a natural look everything's not going to grow into one flat shape you know give it a little bit of life we want it to look nice and springy and ready to go for warmer weather let's continue around until you get to where like the top of your tractor would be and I hope y'all can find these little tractors are so cute. But be careful when you're picking them because sometimes the wording or parts of it at Dollar Tree, they can be kind of faded or kind of maybe not really crisp. So just look through them and find one that looks really crisp and it'll give you a better look. I'm going to use some very thin floral wire that I have and just feed it through the tires or the wheels of this tractor and then across the frame and then twist them in the back. You can tuck the ends underneath or you can just uh, cut them off, whichever way is easiest. Didn't want to use a pipe cleaner, did not want to use any other color because this blends so well. See that? It doesn't even stand out. You can really just barely see it. Then I'm gonna give you a couple of options on how you can do this wreath because we don't all like the same thing, right? And because in my process, I sometimes do things, I cut it out of the videos for timing reasons, but you know, sometimes I'll do something, undo it, and then try it a different way. So I'm gonna show you how I did it. Now this fern that I'm putting in actually came out of those pink flowers that comes from Dollar Tree, and I pulled them off the branches so that I could space them out because there were only four. And I wanted to be able to use them kind of throughout the wreath. So you're just gonna poke them here and there. They're on plastic, that's why I'm gluing them down. They don't have a wire or a stem part that I can push into the frame to secure it in place. So just a little hot glue and hold it there for a minute. Then I'm going to start putting down the pink flowers. I'm doing those next because I have the most of those. So I'm going to use those and space them out. And we're going to go in the same direction as we did with the eucalyptus. I'm saying eucalyptus, this looks like the eucalyptus that the panda bears eat. So I don't know for sure if that's eucalyptus, but I'm just gonna call it that and feel free to correct me if that is not right. I'm just gonna continue to tuck them in until I get as many as I want. And I did have a little bit left over of this that I can use in other arrangements. And if you're new here, I just wanna welcome you and tell you that if you're looking for a better view of the projects when they are finished, my very end of the video is going to show you where, um, how the finished looks are. So I'm just showing you that I'm coordinating the flowers on the back of the tractor with the flowers that I chose to put in the wreath. So I'm going to put these yellow carnations in. And this is the part where you're going to see two different options. There'll be another part shortly too. So at first, I start doing like a little bunch in the corner where I will put all of these into the corner across from where the tractor is. Kind of a little a clump or a little cluster. Gives you more of an impact and it actually kind of looks like hydrangeas when you do them like this. It makes it look a little pom-pom when you put them close together, which is cute. So there's the one option. And with that, we're going to make a little bow. And this is just some of that really pretty ribbon from Dollar Tree from their Easter section. And I've had mine for a while, but I'm pretty sure I saw some either the same type or similar to this this year. But I had, I had some from last year. Love plaids. And so the colors in here match very well to what we were doing with the tractor and the wreath. So I decided, hey, let's add one of these little bows right here under the flowers. And you can just put that down with a little hot glue. 
If this is something you want to put outside, be sure you secure everything down with like Gorilla Glue or soup, some type of a super glue, E6000, so that the temperature and the wind doesn't blow it to pieces. So this is your first option with this wreath. And now I'm going to show you another way you can do it. You can rearrange your flowers. This is why we glue last. into separate sections so you have more of the yellow spaced out across your wreath and this is a very simple wreath with only well pretty much one type of greenery we do have a few pieces of fern but pretty much one type of greenery and then a little bit of floral pretty simple so that's how that will look and we can switch out the bow also and make a bigger bow to go right underneath here. So now you got some options and you can decide which way that you like it best and then do yours the way you like it the best. So now I'm just gonna make some of these almost like uh, you do an awareness sign and then you squish the center down into the tails, just like this. I put it against the tractor to make sure I don't have anything that's gonna be so big that it overwhelms the tractor and blocks it. I wanna be able to see that. I love the little hello spring on there. I don't like a ton of wording on the stuff that I have um, like I used to when I did more of a farmhouse theme, but a little bit is okay, I think. And that is simply my preference and, you know, my thought process. But if you are still into the wording and things like that, that's okay. That's fine. I have, uh, you know, I can appreciate different types of art and different types of creators. And I definitely subscribe to lots of different types of channels here on YouTube. So, you know, it's okay. We can do things differently. It doesn't have to be the same as everybody else, right? We're not saying there's anything wrong about the way anybody does their crafting. Just kind of about preference. So once you get your three bows ready and they're all pretty much the same size, we're gonna take a zip tie around the center and tighten it down. Put your wire in the back first before you tighten it so you can attach it to the frame and then you can fluff out your bows. And don't be bothered by the fact that the yellow tails are so long. You'll see that I do trim everything down. But I like to get an idea of scale before I start cutting it off. So now I'm just kind of pulling and fluffing out the bows. Otherwise, they will lay flat. And the ribbon that is on top there does not have any wire in it. But if you put it on top, it's supported by the wired ribbons underneath and it, it'll stay pretty well in shape there. So just taking some more of that ribbon that we use for the tiny bow, I'm going to go right around the center of it so that we don't see the zip tie. And it really does coordinate quite well with what's going on in that plaid ribbon on top. So you really don't even notice. I'm going to just put that through underneath the tractor and through the wreath that's underneath and just going to twist it down and then again you can tuck it into the frame or you can cut it off. You don't want anything scratching your door or your wall depending on where you put this. And then we'll need to fluff again. Now if you want to wait to the end to do all your fluffing you can certainly do that but this is one of the favorite parts of crafting for me is playing with my bows. So I like to really get in there and just get the best shape that I can get out of my bow. And then at this point, you want to trim more off. You can certainly trim more off. I don't want a whole bunch taken away from the tractor and the wreath, so I don't want to put too much on there. So I've given you a couple of options in this wreath. I hope that you will take the ideas and run with it, gather some inspiration, because that's what this channel is all about. The first project will be an Easter wreath. You'll be needing some pipe cleaners, some type of a mesh or a burlap. I have some ribbons from Dollar Tree, two different kinds, and then a variety of flowers, a couple of big ones, and then some of these smaller ones. 
and you'll need a Dollar Tree wreath. This is not the largest, but it's the next one. Here's that information for you. We'll start by prepping this wreath form. Gonna grab those pipe cleaners, and we're going to start off by going around on the inside ring of the wreath. We wrap it around right there, and we'll go all the way around it. Then we'll come back around on the outside and go around the crossbars on the outer section of the wreath. I think this is gonna make like 12 different sections. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my, I don't know what type of material this is. It's a plasticky, I think it's supposed to look like burlap, but it came from the thrift store. So I'm not entirely sure what the material is, but I like it and I like the color. So we're gonna make cruffles, or I think they're also referred to as a woodland ruffle. And they're easy to use and I've just or to make, and I'm just showing you how to do it if you need to use the clips. You roll it over and then clip it and then roll the other end and then walk your fingers together to make these little pretty cruffles. Now you can put them down like I do, or you can turn them over and put them the other way so that the rolls are on the top. To me, it's just a preference, whatever you like best. It looks sort of like a bow tie when you put them on this way. And we're going to do the inside and then the outside, the inside, the outside. You could do all the inside first and then do the outside or vice versa. But when I put them on this way, I like how they overlap on one another, going inside and outside. So that's how I'm doing mine, but you can choose whatever way um, is best for you your preference make it your own and then once they're all done this is how it's gonna look and I'm just kind of fluffing around and making sure that I have these spaced over the wire wreath and I am pulling out all of those little pipe cleaners because we'll be using those to attach some ribbon down to so it's easier to go ahead and get them out so you're not searching for them when your hands are full Then we're gonna take the ribbons, and one of them is sort of burlap, and the other one's like a thin, silky type material, or polyester, I'm not really, I'm not sure, I didn't check the uh, the little spool it came on, but I'm gonna overlap them. I'm gonna put the solid color on the bottom and the printed on the top. I'm gonna gather up the end of it, put it down on any pipe cleaner you choose. You can do it on the inside or the outside, doesn't matter. I'm gonna keep that top one on top and keep that orange one on the bottom and we're going to go inside outside inside outside wrapping over here if you want to measure you can measure um, it would probably be somewhere between eight to ten inch little loops here i didn't measure what i do is just lay it on the top of the the um, cruffles and then just make sure my spacing is right so it appears as though it's just laying or floating right on top I don't want to squish down my ruffles and take the dimension away or the fullness away from the wreath. So I just make sure that it sits right on top of the one that's underneath it. The important thing um, is going to be that you make each of these about the same size. You don't want some to be super small and some to be very wide because you're going to be separating this ribbon and you don't want to have you know any type of irregularities in the in the wreath. I hope that made sense. Again, it's one thing in my head, comes out my mouth another way, but you'll get it in a minute, I think. Okay, so this is how it looks when you get to the end. Now we're just gonna take our hands and pull these out. So we'll do orange on the bottom and then print on the top and then vice versa. So you see, you're gonna do it opposite as you go around. This is gonna give you some additional dimension and color and interest in your wreath. And you see this piece here, it wasn't quite enough to tuck into that last tie. That's not a problem. I'm just gonna put a little split here in it, a little dovetail, and just curl it down and it'll be fine. You really don't even notice it once it's done. So just make sure you have all those nice and fluffed. Those wires help it stay still. This is just a little bouquet that I made to go on the top of the wreath. You're just gonna add your flowers, the tallest ones in the back. 
my camera kind of died and I didn't notice it so I apologize for not having that in there for you then I have this foam carrot that I got from a thrift store you can get your little fake carrots anywhere I don't know why I'm so into carrots this Easter and spring but I really am then be sure that you cut off all of these little extra pipe cleaners and you hot glue that little bundle down like this and the carrot on top of it when you glue that down you'll get the final result The next project is an Easter wreath. I'm going to take some ribbon that I was very, very fortunate to find thrifting. The burlap ribbon and then I got some ribbon that looks like Dollar Tree ribbon so you could use that. This is a little paper egg, probably had candy in it, but look how gorgeous these pictures are. Oh my goodness, look at them, they're precious. I got these from a store called Dirt Cheap. I paid 50 cents a piece for each pick and we're going to use two picks. These are some thrifted dogwood pieces and also some thrifted willow pieces. You see there? It's the same theme as in there. Okay, now I have a grapevine wreath that I also got thrifting. I never buy my wreath forms unless they're wire from Dollar Tree. And we're going to begin to place these down. Now, I took my hanger off the back because I didn't want that to be my decision maker of where I put my pieces of greenery and where I put, um, you know, how it looked in the end because I like to move things around. So I just took that off and we'll make another one in the end. I'm going to weave this pick, the first one, through here. I always fluff them out, you know, you want to fluff them out. Then using some floral wire also from the thrift store. My cutters are also from the thrift store. We are going to weave it through that grapevine wreath and over the wiring for the greenery. And this is going to make sure that it keeps that curve and that it doesn't fall. You can cut your edges off or turn them back to the back and then fix those back the way you like them. I'm forever fluffing. If you followed me for a while, you know I'm forever fluffing. I cannot leave it as is. I've got to mess with it. Then we're going to put a piece along the bottom and this will be the bottom this is not going to be a typical round wreath covered completely around we're gonna we want to see that wood underneath or that vine underneath same process as we did before wherever you need to use floral wire to help you place things down do that using the floral wire will allow me to go back in cut it off and repurpose this greenery. I can use it for another project later if I want to. I don't sell my projects. I make them for myself. I make them for my videos and then most of them get broken back down and reused. But there are some I have a cabinet that is full of the ones that I really love and I've kept. That's That might be something I could put in a video. If anyone's interested let me know if you would like to see the projects that I have kept for myself. I can definitely uh, add that into a video somewhere. So I know I'm out of camera angle up here. When my daughter is home and she's crafting with me downstairs, I kind of get distracted. So I wasn't really looking at how I had the camera placed in this part. And I do apologize for that. But what I did there on the side is the same thing I'm doing on the bottom. So whatever you might have missed, you're going to do the same thing that I'm doing here up there. I'm trying to take the willow branches and kind of feed them around the laurel so it kind of looks like it's all growing together. It's interspersed together. And I'm just going to have them kind of, you know, at a central point where the stems go and then they get a little bit wider and broader as they go outward. Next, this beautiful dogwood pick. If I would have found a bag full, I would have picked up the whole bag. Dogwoods are beautiful to me. I love them. And they scream spring because they are blooming here already in South Alabama. And I love it. I'm not mad at all that winter is going. Not at all. How about you? Okay, so like I said before, what you're doing on the bottom, you're going to do the same thing over here on the side. It's not going to be 
perfectly symmetrical, but that's not the look that I'm going for. I still like the wild, right? Still like the wild. So we're going to be using this on the wreath, but we need a backing on it because we have to have some way to attach it to the wreath, right? I'm going to use some hot glue and just a scrap of cardstock paper. I'm going to press it down. The glue is going to drain down. It's going to, you know, funnel down onto the paper because of gravity. Then I'm going to use a stick, kind of clean it up a little bit and go back in with my glue gun. Then I'll use the stick again to make it nice and smooth, kind of like you do caulking around a bathtub. Then we're going to trim it out. Now it has a back. It has better surface area for us to attach something. But we need to do something with the edge. I thrifted this beautiful trim from Goodwill. When I say Goodwill, I'm saying the Goodwill bins. I know a lot of people don't understand and they say they can't afford things at the thrift store. I go to the Goodwill bins and it's a little different. Little different. You pay by the pound. Okay, so now this egg is complete. And she'll be glued down to the project shortly. Let's work on a bow. I want my bow to be nice and simple. This is a simple type of an arrangement, a simple type of a wreath. We're not going to make it too fussy. It doesn't need to be extremely festive. It just needs to say hello spring, you know? Saying hello spring without actually saying hello spring. So you see the kind of bow I'm making here. Very easy. I tie it with a double knot in the back. I'm going to flip that over, kind of puff it a little bit. It does have wire. And then we'll be adding another bow on top with this ribbon. If you don't have this ribbon, there's something very similar, but a little bit wider at Dollar Tree. It's been in every Dollar Tree that I have been to, so hopefully this is something that you can get your hands on. I will tie this also in a double knot, and then we're gonna tie the two of these together. I will tie them rather than gluing them because I wanna have the ties still on there to attach them down to the wreath. We're going to take the tails and the little loops, fluff, and pull down, get it in the shape that it needs to be in. And then we can trim the tails off to a length that suits you. You can dovetail it. You can cut it at a slant, whichever way you like it. I like to cut my upper bow uh, tails a little bit shorter so that you can see the longer one underneath. That's just my preference, but you can do anything you like here. And then I will tie it down to the wreath right over where we put the bottom row in. So right around there and then glue down that little egg. And look how pretty this is. This is very cottagey, this is very country. I think it is so pretty. Farmhouse, rustic, it can be so many things. You know, don't lock yourself in the box of one style. If there's something that you love, do what you love. Do what brings you joy in your own home, right? All right, so now this is our hanger. And here are our projects. The next project is going to be a chick swag. We're gonna use pipe cleaners, mesh and burlap. Some greenery, whatever you like. I love these big picks, they were actually from Christmas. And then I've got some baby's breath some little random clips, some Dollar Tree florals, and these were thrifted. And then some willow and some little flyaways. This is a pick from a Dollar Tree sign. It is 18 inches long. I always like to save the yard pick sticks. And then this cute little um, Easter greeting sign. Now I got this at the thrift store, but thrift it if you want to. You can definitely get it from Hobby Lobby. If you can get it 40% off right now, that would be great. So I was tickled to death when I saw that just that paper was not actually cut. It was just pushed into the hole. So I just pushed the paper back out so I didn't have to use any type of, you know, putty or anything to fill the hole in. Just with a little hot glue in the back, it just popped it right back into place like it never was punched out. And I cannot tell you how happy those little things make me. They bring me a lot of joy. Look at that. You can barely even tell. All right, so let's prepare this st steak here. I'm going to take 
one pipe cleaner and go about an inch from the end and I'm just approximating the inch. I'm going to wrap it so that it's in the center and you can lock it in with a little bit of glue. If you wrap it tight enough though you won't have to do this but strictly up to you so I'll show you how to do it with the glue if you're concerned. Not everybody has the strength in their hands so you can use a little glue to help you. We're going to go about four inches down and then we're going to make our next one. Now this one is going to be off to the side. Then we'll put another one right butted up next to it and twist it off to the other side. It only takes a few twists and they'll stay right there. Use your glue, add a little glue there and hold it into place. The next one is going to be in the center. We're gonna alternate back and forth. So we did one in the center and then two and then one. And here we are back at the two four inch segments going down okay and then the last one down here is just going to be a single one just like the single one on the top and this is what your pick will look like four inches four inches get them spaced out nicely I'm going to use some of this deco mesh use whatever you like whatever kind of deco mesh you have you can use here I like this white came from the thrift store point that little bunch downward you're gonna take about an inch and a half of that unraveled stuff point it toward the inside so you won't see it and then we're gonna go to 16 inches here is it 16 inches you'll have to go back and look at that I can't quite recall this might have been 12 inches I don't want to get you confused just be sure that you go back and look at that and make sure I don't have my glasses on y'all I know that's bad isn't it that's so bad I need to go back to the eye doctor too same thing whatever poof you start with you're gonna use that same measurement all the way you can use a yardstick for this whatever you want to use but I have found that the width of this little stake is enough to hold it against the side of my cutting mat which makes this process a little bit easier when you do these just discovered that maybe it will be helpful to you as well so we're just going from the top in the center to the outside in the center to the outside back to the center down here in the bottom you see easy we're gonna turn it upside down and continue down the rest of the side we're gonna start in the next available piece make our poof and put it in there and lock it into place that's easy enough right and what I am trying to accomplish with this is to make this look wider. That stake is only what we use to hold our pieces in place, right? So we're going to establish the width of this by using the deco mesh. And you really won't notice that much of the deco mesh when you do your project. Okay, I'll tell y'all this too. This cream color deco mesh I got at the thrift store. You can get it at Hobby Lobby. Use a coupon, whatever you have to do to get it cheaper because the mesh that they have at Dollar Tree that's white has some iridescence in it and I just didn't think it was appropriate for for my taste in this project so I, sent, I tend to kind of like the ones that are plain and they don't have all that glittery looking stuff in them just my choice though once you're back to your starting point go ahead and cut it off now I didn't show you this one but here it is this is a 10 inch piece of deco mesh we're gonna do 16 inches and we're going to do three of these we're gonna cut three pieces 16 inches and lo and behold this was a scrap and I had just enough love it when that happens I'm using up some of the things I already have in my stash okay so there's our three little pieces here I'm gonna put my wreath to the side or my swag to the side we're gonna start on this piece by just making a couple of rolls walk your fingers up and turn that one also under you can use clips if you need to um, these are called a woodland ruffle or a cripple from the videos that I have seen that's the terminology they use so that's what we're gonna go with that's how I learned it looks sort of like a butterfly doesn't it okay so same process here I know I got out of frame a little bit but you're gonna roll the sides and walk your fingers toward each other like that you can flip them up instead of down if you want to but because I'm adding a bunch of greenery here I don't want anything extra to snag when I'm trying to place down the greenery 
So these big pieces are only going to go down the single sections. We're going to do something else with the ones that are off to the sides. So the top, the middle, and the bottom will have a cruffle. And we're going to arrange them so that they look like a bow tie. So just have them going side to side. Okay. I didn't have any more of that one, so that's why I started using this one. We're going to use 16 inches of this thinner one. This one came from Hobby Lobby and I got it on sale. So we're making little bows with this. Because we can't make a cruffle the same size, it would be tiny. But this will allow us to have a bigger piece. It looks like a bigger piece anyway. It's going to make it wider and that's what I want. So there's one off to the side. Show you one more time how to make another one. Walk it together. And there you go. Now you can just place that down right there. And I want these to kind of uh, go toward the middle and the side as well. Rather than up and down. Because I want it to be wider, right? Not bulkier, but wider. So we're going to do it to the sides. Same process right here. So you'll end up with four of those little bows. This is what it looks like once you've got it complete. you got your singles and here are your doubles. You can go ahead and cut off what you have here. Now be sure that you've given it a good tight twist on all of them before you do this because you can't go back and correct it when you cut too much off. So I'm using some 26 gauge wire. Use whatever you like. This is just really easy to bend and it's already in, in, you know, cut into the right size pieces so I have plenty of room to feed them through the deco mesh and the, uh, the burlap looking um, stuff that we have there. Stuff. Boy, that sounds professional, doesn't it? Burlap stuff. The ribbon, y'all. <laughs> the ribbon. So I'm just going to start off with my picks here and just fluff them out. They can be flat on the back, but kind of splay them out a little bit so that we make this, you know, give it some width. It's already got the height there, but we want to balance it a little bit with a wider width. I'm going to shape this into like a hairpin. So that's what you see me doing here. I'm just trying to get that right. Then I'll go from the bottom up through the middle and across those two pieces of greenery that I just placed down. This is going to hold it into place. I'm going to give it a good couple of twists and then we can twist out and flip out and flip out this greenery underneath to the sides without worrying that anything is going to fall apart. It is not going to fall apart. My baby breath happens to come on picks of three. They have, you know, when you cut them, they have three little pieces or three little bunches, I guess. So I'm going to take advantage of that. Rather than putting a bunch of little pieces in there, I'm just going to use the whole pick and just spread them apart. We're going to lay them right over the top of the other greenery, and we're going to take the same wires there and lock those into place so they're not going anywhere. If this is squished down tight in the center, that's totally okay because we're going to need a flat surface to put down the little sign that we got, right? So don't worry about that. You can squish it down tight in the middle. I want to add some more baby's breath because I just love the flyaway springy look that this gives. Really like that. Then I've got the willow and these are just some scraps I had from another project. I did a wreath not too long ago, an Easter wreath that turned out beautifully. It was so gorgeous. You know, some people say you shouldn't toot your own horn. But God gives me my gifts, and I'm giving him the glory. That's how it happens on my channel. Thank you, God. I appreciate it. I love my gift. And I'm so glad to share it with others, right? That's what we do. It's a gift. You share it, right? So we're going to have to have something to attach this down. This is metal. You want to use a strong, strong glue here. So Gorilla Glue did the trick for me. But just be careful when you are fastening it down, because if you do fasten it down and it too tightly it can pop off we don't want that to happen so I'm just gonna feed those pipe cleaners through there and then loop it around on the back maybe you could add a little bit of super glue or something to there so say you did add super glue or gorilla glue or something like that it has to dry just hold something on top of it to hold it in place until that dries so that's what I use my little conductors for my little uh, electrical insulators that's what I use them for Y'all remember these things? They came on light poles. They were a bunch of different colors, but oh, I found these two blue ones at the thrift store and almost lost it, y'all. Have you ever just 
found something at a garage sale or a thrift store and you just clutch your te your chest and just want to collapse. Well, that's where I was when I found those. Oh, I'm a little silly this morning. Y'all forgive me. Gotta laugh, don't we, though? We have to laugh. It shows that we have joy in our heart when we can laugh. And I sure do have some joy in my heart. And I appreciate y'all. Y'all put up with a lot from me. My shaky hands, saying words wrong, all those little things that they really just show you who I am. That's really me. I'm showing you who I really am. And if you like that and you stick around on this channel, it is very appreciated because I'm authentic and you're always going to get the same thing from me when it comes to that. Okay, so these beautiful daisies, they're so pretty. Um, these I picked out of a wedding, it looked like a wedding um, arrangement, maybe something a bridesmaid had. All kinds of beautiful flowers in it. I found it at the thrift store. I pulled that wax tape off of there, the floral tape, and scavenged for what I needed. I'm going to go back in and add more baby's breath. And I'm going to add some more of those pink wildflower looking things from Dollar Tree. You can get baby's breath. It's a little different, but you can get it at Dollar Tree. You can get daisies at Dollar Tree in a variety of colors right now. So maybe you don't want to do white. There's so many colors. I've seen coral. I have seen blue. I've seen purple, yellow, just a huge variety. So get them this spring if you think you might need them later. Go ahead and get them now. I had some of these little roses left, so I'm going to stick those in there. I think that gives that, keeps that the feeling of the um, Victorian, that loose wildflower look, you know, what you would have in an English garden, things like that. That's kind of what it reminds me of. So we're going to take that original little ribbon hanger and we're going to use it as a hanger to go on the back of this. And we're going to hot glue it right onto the stick back there. Tuck it up underneath that wire if you need to. 